Listen up, you fucks. You know what you just did? Probably just made the best decision that you're going to make all week. And you downloaded the new episode of Jiu-Jitsu Radio. My name's Alex Trosa. Thank you very much for tuning in. This is a good episode that you're going to hear. Unfortunately, it's been a while since I recorded a new episode of Jiu-Jitsu Radio. I apologize. Mia culpa. I'm so sorry. Papa's got to pay the bills, though, so it's been a busy few weeks. I'll fill you in on that in just a minute. But first, I got to thank the people that have been supporting the podcast, all of our sponsors. Everybody has been so awesome, and everybody has been so supportive of the podcast. So let me go ahead and give my shout-outs to Choke Aloha, the first sponsor that we ever had, and hopefully... We'll stay until the day this podcast ends, which is hopefully never, so Choke Aloha forever. Go to ChokeAloha.com, get 10% off when you use the promo code Jujitsu Radio, including their new uh, Rasta Shaka Tees, which I still need to pick up one, and pick up the brand new Rash Guard, which is limited edition. There's not that many left. Uh of the Ocean Vibes Rash Guard. It's a collaboration with Elusive, um, elusive elusive.com. It's A-L-U-C-I-V-E.com. They got together, they put together this dope rash guard and spats that are really freaking cool with the Ocean Vibe mentality. I need to pick those up, but again, I gotta pay my bills first. In case you guys don't know, if you haven't had the time to check out Chocaloha yet, I urge you to do it. Um, Aloha literally translates into the joyful sharing of life energy in the present, which is 100% everything that I believe in. Um, I even named my company based off of that mentality. Um, Choke Aloha is a brand that kind of merges the mentality of jujitsu, which is the choke, and Aloha, obviously, like sharing the positive vibes. And Choke Aloha always reminds people to to roll with Aloha and share Aloha everywhere you go, which is why I love the company because it's not just about putting out awesome apparel and equipment, but also about spreading positive vibes. So I'm going to try and spread positive vibes to you guys by giving you that discount. 10% off. Use the promo code Jiu-Jitsu Radio. Also, I don't know if uh, if you guys have been keeping up, with the UFC, um, the Kevin Lee fight against uh, Ferguson it was pretty crazy. It was a great fight, but Kevin Lee came out with a staph infection and he fought, which is absolutely fucking disgusting. You know what would have helped him out? Some jujitsu soap. Could have gone to jujitsusoapco.com, picked himself up a couple of bars. Used it in the middle of training camp. Wouldn't have risked it. Wouldn't probably be taking a ton of antibiotics right now. It would have been great. And then he wouldn't have put Ferguson in the risk. At least not that way. He still would have fought him. Tried to beat him up. Put him in risk that way. But he wouldn't have put him in risk in, in having a staph infection. Which is super disgusting. And even worse, it was right in your chest. About what? Three inches away from your heart? Because that's always fucking good. Um... Go to Jiu-Jitsu Soap Co. Use the promo code JJ Radio. That's the letters JJ Radio. Get 10% off. Pick up the brand new body washes that they have out now. Punch Drunk and Jiu-Jitsu Island. And I believe Punch Drunk is their most popular bar soap. And now it's in liquid form. So there's even less of an excuse for you guys to come in stinking. Or be stinking after training. Look, I love this stuff. I've been using it nonstop. I actually do have to put in another order for some more soap. I love it. I, I got rid of all the other soaps that I get from the grocery store now. And I'm only using um, Jiu-Jitsu soap. We actually give them a little bit of a shout out on this episode. So you get a more explanation as to why it's important to keep your hygiene level up. Don't be disgusting. Don't be dirty. It's also a couple of bucks on a bar of soap saves you thousands of dollars in medical bills once you get a staph infection and all that other stuff. So, Jiu Jitsu Soap Co., be clean, be sexy, 
Last but not least, I want to give a shout out to our newest sponsors, Exo Audio. Go to exoaudio.net, E X O A U D I O.net, and you get 10% off anything you order with the promo code JJR10. The letters JJR10. Pick yourself up a pair of the wireless sound buds and pick yourself up uh, one of the juice cards. They're on sale and you still get another 10% off off the sale price. You're welcome. Um, the sound buds are noise canceling, lightweight, sweat proof, wireless sound buds. Like just little earplugs you stick right into your ears. They're wireless. You don't have to worry about cables getting caught up when you're running around, whether it's like training, like you're lifting weights or you're running, or even if you're just walking around and you end up, you know, I fucking hate it when I'm just trying to move around and I yank the cable by accident, pops out of my ears or yanks out of the phone or God forbid, like you just have your phone on your desk or something and it goes flying across the room. It's 2017, people. All right. Let's get let's get into the wireless age, right? You don't have to worry about getting cancer, nothing like that, out of using your your cell phones and stuff like that anymore. I actually um, rocked these uh, on my trip. Uh, was it last week? Two weeks ago? At the a week and a half ago, whatever. When I flew up to Tennessee to film the Flex Lewis Classic, kept on having people asking me about them. Love them. I love these headphones. I had them on through the entire flight. Battery lasted the entire time I was flying. Didn't have a single person bother me like when I'm listening to my music. They're, and you won't even feel them. It's not like they're, they're dragging you down. You don't feel them like kind of pulling down on your ears. You're not going to sit there and start itching your ear. Like you know when you have like some earbuds in, like your ears start itching? Yeah, none of that. And then the juice card. Save my butt, man. Not even going to lie to you. Um, there was a couple of times where I was running around working and I didn't have my battery pack on me, like my big one, or and I didn't have like a plug to plug into the wall. I can't just leave my phone there. This little sucker just sticks right to the back of your phone. Good to go, son. Either way, go to exoaudio.net. Use the promo code JJR10. Get 10% off your entire order worth every penny they have a bunch of other products that'll turn your beats headphones if you have some of the more old school ones that are wired turn them into wireless look guys i'm just trying to give you options here but the sound buds definitely the way to go love them love mine use them every day now let's get into the show just to give you guys kind of a heads up of or a recap of what i've been up to the past few weeks like I said, a uh, week and a half ago, I got a, a last-minute text from my boy, Flex Lewis, saying, hey, I need you to come film. Would you be down for it? And me being the road dog, I said, let's do this. Let's make this happen. So 8 o'clock in the morning text, 10 o'clock in the morning, I get the verification that I got my flight. 2.45, I am walking onto the plane just in time. And your boy was on his way to Tennessee Murfreesboro uh, for the Flex Lewis Classic. Landed, uh, what time did it land? I want to say I got there at like 6.45 or something like that. Literally, no, a little bit earlier, I guess. Yeah, anyway, jumped on the car with my boy Eric. We drove about 45 minutes to get to the hotel and was pretty much nonstop go. From then on, I was filming and taking photos nonstop. Uh, if you head over to flexlewis.net or check out any of Flex Lewis social media, you'll see a couple of sneak peeks. Um, I think photos in the video are, are going to go up soon. I'm not sure. Um, I also posted a couple of sneak peek shots on my page, Sonder Marketing, on Instagram if you guys want to check it out. Um, met a lot of cool people, man. Um, I think bodybuilding gets a lot of, uh, gets a lot of crap. Uh, because of everything in the politics that they go into play and obviously it is a very selfish sport but man I met a lot of nice people uh, I got to catch up with some friends that I haven't seen in about a year 
so it's always fun to to run into everybody. Oh, also, big shout out to uh, the folks over at uh, Ambition Threads. Um, they hooked me up with this dope hat, which kind of uh, I like the logo. It's really cool. This hat is nice, crisp, and clean, just how I like it. Um, you know, they don't they're not sponsoring me or anything. Uh, the guys just uh, decided to hook me up with a hat. I freaking love it. Thank you guys very much. So make sure you guys check out Ambition Threads. Um, like I said, I met a lot of cool people up there. Um, so it's cool, man. It was a lot of fun. And then besides that, you know, we came back. I got back, geez, Sunday at like midnight. Um, again, almost missed my flights. Uh, I think that's a whole different story altogether. I'll, uh, I'll fill you guys in on later on. Um, but I almost missed the flights back. Um. Uh, as in true fashion, as is my life style, but I got back safe and sound, and then back to work on the grind with photo shoot the next morning, and then I've also been working with uh, Bellator light heavyweight title contender Linton Vassell. Um, uh, Linton and I have been friends now for a couple of years, and he hit me up and asked me if I wanted to do some work with him and help him out on his marketing and filming and taking photos and stuff, and it's always fun working with friends, man. So guys, check out uh, LDV underscore the swarm or just search Linton Vassell on Instagram. Check out the YouTube channel because we started up a YouTube channel for Linton. Uh, we've been putting out some behind the scenes, just kind of uh, like training montages and stuff just to kind of give everyone an idea of who Linton is. I don't think he gets the recognition that he deserves. He is an extremely talented fighter extremely talented fighter and he's young man he's got he's still got a long way to go um and he's always fun to be around even when he's training full steam man he's always positive he's always uh cracking jokes and stuff so it's always fun to work with guys like that so check that out um shout out to Litton. hopefully i can get him on the podcast after he wins um other than that, man, I, I just been busy, you know. I just uh, um, oh, quick heads up. Be sure to pick up the next issue of Fighters Only magazine because your boys got some photos in there. Um, they uh, they are doing a piece on uh, Vulcan Ozdemir, and you guys know that uh, I worked with Vulcan for for quite a while, and um, they asked to use some of my photos and stuff to feature. My homie Vulcan, um, he's finally getting the attention he deserves as well. And he's got some big fights lined up for sure. But shout out to Fighters Only Magazine. Uh, appreciate them, uh, you know, really enjoying my photos enough. Other than that, man, I haven't been able to train that much the last couple of weeks just because I've had everything, to, I've had to deal with everything. And like I said, I got to pay the bills. And uh, sometimes I got to sacrifice my training for it. So I won't get to compete, but I do get to show up, support my teammates, and take some photos of some of the best jiu-jitsu fighters in the world. Um, so if you guys see me out there, feel free to stop, say hi, take a photo. I'll take a photo of you. You take a photo of me. We'll be a big old happy family. And um, that's it, man. Really, uh, that's just a quick summarizing Um one thing I do want to say is I want to say thank you to everyone who actually has been supporting my photography and, and some of my artwork um, by picking them up. I've had people uh, order uh, my jujitsu uh, photos, like artwork that I put together uh, on coffee mugs and t-shirts and things like that. And I've been getting nothing but amazing feedback. And I, a shout out to, uh, to my friend Madeline who also... Uh, picked up a, um, a shower curtain with one of my photos. It was super cool of her to do that. Um, so thank you very much for that. And um, yeah, if you guys want to pick up some of my work, go to mycosmicjourney.com. Uh, check out, that's the blog, and you'll also find my artwork there. It'll take you, you can even get some of my photos on yoga mats, which I think when you're relaxing and trying to zen out, I think you should be thinking about me while you do that. But, you know, I'm not egotistical or anything. Uh, with that being said, again, thank you everybody for the support. Today's episode features my good friend, 
jiu-jitsu champion, MMA fighter, Herbert Burns, fresh out of his contract from 1FC, moved to the U.S. I got to hang out with him in his new apartment in Lantana, Florida, right down the street, literally walking distance from Combat Club. Um, it was fun to catch up with him. Uh, I haven't been able to uh, to speak to him in the last, geez, what, like month and a half, two months since he moved to the U.S.? Um, like I said, I've been super busy trying to keep the ball rolling, but it's always fun to catch up with him. Be sure to follow Herbert on social media, Herbert Burns on Instagram, just all one word, Herbert Burns. Now, without any further ado, here's Jiu-Jitsu Radio with special guest, Herbert Burns. Should be good from here, right? Yeah. Am I good from here? I'm good from here. I'm good, yes, this is a little better microphone. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Jiu Jitsu Radio. I'm here joined once again with my good friend, Jiu Jitsu Black Belt, world champion, Herbert Burns. Hello guys, what's up? I'm uh, back. How are you, sir? I'm good. Good. Long time no see. Yeah, be on why I felt yeah. felt seeing you, but uh I mean you good. guys ran ran off. Before the fight to dodge the hurricane. Yes. For Gilbert's matter. fight. And you had to go back to Brazil, come back, you move. So now you're here permanently. Yes, now I'm here permanently. Move a different house, not living for Gilbert anymore. <laughs> you so. say that, but I think you kind of miss that. Because Bruna's a good cook. Yeah, Bruna definitely is a good cook and the kids. But yeah, you I get like to, to sleep have more. more privacy. <laughs> so it's great. It's a little easier to, to sleep in now. Definitely. You know what? I haven't had Bruna's cooking in like two years. Oh, that's such. A, she cooks really good. I know, good she too. cooks really good. Cause like and healthy food, so it's good. Now, now I do my own cooking. It's better. Kind of lucky cooking, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah. It's, it's good. better when Gilbert is cutting weight because she'll still cook like good, like pretty much for herself, and, and it's not super lean. So there's more food for me when I come over. Yeah, no, yeah, definitely. So it's like, oh, eat, 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 eat. I'm like, Okay. But you also cook good. Cook good. Yeah, cook I got to do. Good. Yeah. You I cook could, pizza for us long time ago. It's I got to really do another good. pizza party. After the fight. After the fight. We can, yeah, you're we speaking can. of which. So your 1FC contract finally ended. Yes. And now you have a fight lined up on December 6th? 9. December 9. 9 in Oklahoma. In Oklahoma. With the fight time promotions like no, champ. No, no, no. Yeah, for the fight time promotion champ. Yeah. But it's going to be... The, it's a new promotion coming up, Primus FC. Yeah. So excited to fight in the U.S. Excited to to be part of this this new project coming up. Hey, man, this time go there, put a great fight, great show to the American fans, and go back to the win column. But is that a that's not a title fight? It's not a title fight. So did they approach you, or did you like reach out to them? They approached me. They yeah. approached me. So what do you think the game plan is? Because it's a it's a one time fight contract. Yes, it's a one time fight. Contract. So what do you what do you got planned after that? Or are you still a not win? My plan fight? is a win. My mm -hmm. plan is a win. Go there, get a win, and then see what's gonna come from there. But they they like I I expecting a great show from the guys. Right. The guys, I think they have a great project coming up. They will do, I think, uh, lay the home uh, like a uh, Grand Prix. Right in few divisions to decide who will be the champion and let's see how it goes i think i may stay there for 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 a while and see how things goes to but go it's back the, to the big leagues the grand prix isn't going to be one of those like multiple fights in one night thing no they don't allow them the, in the u.s no right? no yeah. that's that's like no good like you can perform good yeah. after the second after the first fight you get all beat up injured it's yeah can happen Little little cut, so and then how we're yeah. gonna do it in the next fight. It was funny. I was reading uh, an article in um, Fighters Only magazine that was all about Sakuraba, and he talks about like a fight that he had. Mm -hmm. Was it with uh, with Hoist? Like forty five minutes. Yes. And then he had to go back and fight again. It's like he lost. Like what yeah, you... sure. He was so tired after Come that. On, He's man. just drained. And depends how, like, in a fight, many things can happen. You can get a cut. 
you can hurt your leg, you can hurt your foot, you know, black you can hurt eye, your like hands. your eyes, yeah. So like, you know, the fights can be like uh, needs a lot of not a strength for you conditioning. Right. Saying so you gas, the guy got a quick knockout. He's already had on you. Yeah. So the fans doesn't have a great show how they expect when both yeah. guys are fresh 100%. So if you, to do a Grand Prix, it's better do like a, a tournament, do a one fight, next event, you go. Yeah. You guys train, do a full training camp, and then they fight together. But let me ask you, because I, I have the argument about like a lot of those Grand Prix fights is that if you have someone who who's been fighting from the beginning of the Grand Prix and they're just constantly like fighting every month or every other month compared to someone who comes in like later on in the rounds, like they're going to be fresher. So someone that fought three times in a row or like three months in a row compared to someone who only fought once, that still is a big effect. Oh, for sure. Definitely. See, like that's the thing. So I think you and I talked about this. Remember we talked about Ben Askren? Yes. So like for me, it's like that's why I don't give him that much credit because... He, anytime he fought someone, he always fought someone that was either like three or four fights deep, like in a row. And his fight was like maybe either the first one or like the second one. He never fought someone that many times in a row. I think maybe once. Yeah, it's, it's hard. I gotta check that. So, but if you've been fighting regularly, it's good because you don't have ring rust, but your body's beat up. Your body's beat up also. So. But, like, yeah, it's hard. Like, Ben Ashkin has always been in good promotion. So, and the promotion's backing him up. Yeah. So. He's retiring It's now. like, when the promotion comes to a fighter that doesn't have the contract with Dan. Yeah. So, there's your chance now to fight Ben Ashkin. You're going to take a leave. Yeah. You guys beat up, but. You're going to make the money. You're like going to make the money. Yeah. And you're going to get the exposure. So, they always accept. It's hard to, to yeah. say no to opportunities like that. Well, look at, um. Uh, Ian McCall, he just signed with Ryzen now. Oh, nice. So That's it's like he got out of, he, he asked out his UFC contract, they like cut him, and then he just signed right away with Ryzen. That's and it's good. a tournament, but he got a buy for the first one, so he's coming in and like in the semis. So it's like, I mean, not that it'll help him much. He's been taking so much damage over the yes, past couple he, years. Yes, he's been taking, he wasn't doing great on his last couple of fights. Yeah. Well, he was scaring everybody when he had that whole uh, interview, I think, with. Uh, with Ariel and he was saying that you know like he had like brain damage and all this other stuff yeah. he looked like everybody was, was starting to get freaked out by it Gary Tonin got signed to one you saw that yeah I saw I saw that interested to see how, how he gonna do what division he gonna fight when FC has a different weight system yeah so maybe he'd be a lightweight I don't know how gonna be now cause Ben Askren gonna fight Shinya York I think it's this weekend or next weekend I think so yeah so Ben Askren gonna fight and they're gonna retire. He's gonna become a one championship executive, and then, like, if he if he wins the fight, the title welterweight will be vacant. If he loses, Shinji York gonna be the champion. But York is too light for the division. I yeah. don't know if he's gonna drop and come back to the lightweight division. Do I really don't know where Gary Tonon gonna be there but he also needs to get a couple of fights before thinking a title shot so i think they will feed him yeah like good fights for his style so he can get a couple of wins because yeah. they they're definitely not paying cheap for his purse. yeah for sure and so i'm sure they won't they will take care of the investments what do you think though like you have so many of like the jiu-jitsu fighters now like going into mma like you have gary you have mckenzie you have Rodolfo. Like, Rodolfo's sitting here training at ATT. Yeah, I think it's a natural, it's a natural thing. When you achieve everything, not everything, most of the things you want in Jiu-Jitsu, it's hard to keep your motivation, it's hard to keep a good paycheck on Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Do you think it's really more money than it is, like, a fighting challenge? Money counts a lot, but if you only do it for money, it's a big mistake from my, from my perspective, or my perspective. But if you like the MMA, you like the sport, yeah. it'll be good. It's good for you to try, even... Like, not sure if they are gonna be like a world class MMA artist in the yeah. future, but it's good to then try. That's how I didn't try it. Like, when I came to like Marcelo, they try a little bit, yeah. then work out, come back and do, do the thing. You know, my thing is only grappling, so I'm just gonna focus on that. But if they are uh, willing to make the sacrifice, work hard, training, improve themselves in, in the striking, the wrestling, 
and they can they I'm sure they they have the talents to to become a great martial artists and get titles on 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 the big promotions do you think it's easier for like an elite level jiu-jitsu fighter to go into MMA than it is for a wrestler mm. I think the grappling guys it's easier than transition to MMA than the striking guys you think so I think so because grappling jiu-jitsu most because I can talk about right. jiu-jitsu it's really technical so when they learn or striking they will try to learn the proper technique if you're a striker you're comfortable striking you don't like very much a guy on top of you grinding yeah. you over and and we wearing you down i think for strikers is way worse the transition like let's see how gokhan saki gonna do I mean, oh, he won the fight. He, yeah, he won the fight. He got rocked. He got a rock by. He got rocked pretty by, bad. I, the guy was okay striking, yeah. but he's not even near close to Gokhan Sak's level. Yeah. So. And he took a lot of shots. So like, and he never he didn't fight a wrestler. The guy was just a striker. Yeah. So let's see how he does against the top guys of the division. Yeah. How he gonna look? Well, I mean. He's got like a lot of guys in the division, but there's not the too many big The division is kind of shallow now. Yeah. They like to have a division. A few guys went to Bellator, and now... There's not there's not there's that not, much of a challenge. No, there's not much of a challenge now. They, like, if you get right on the end of the division, you see John Jones, uh, uh, Cormier as a champion, and they are a step ahead of everyone. Then yeah. a little bit behind, you see Gustafsson, Ozdemir. Vulcan, you see, like Glover, and then has like everyone Glover. has Osvisan Pro is almost on this guy's yeah. level, and then has everyone there, like everyone's everyone. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, to to me, in my opinion, it's, it's really kind of Bellator division on light heavyweight. I think is stronger. Yeah, than the UFC. I mean, you have Linton, the like, and you have for Linton, have you Bader, Bader, Phil, Phil Davis, you got. Yeah. Liam McGarry. But even then, Linton's gone through most of the guys. Yes. So it's, I mean, it is. It's tough to have a deep, light, heavyweight, heavyweight division. Yes. But it's also kind of like the the gap between the top five compared to everybody else. Is yes, huge. that's huge. That's huge. Because if you put, you could put Gokan Saki against five to 15, the rank, like rank number five to 15, and most likely he's going to go through all of them. Most likely, yeah, if they don't have a stronger wrestling, yeah, most. right? I mean, you if you put him up with uh old Nye, old Yannick, whatever the the guy that beat Victor, the guy that Vulcan starched, yes, he's a good grappler. He's the first one to do the the Ezekiel choke, yeah, from the yeah. bottom. Which so it's like, but even then, they, they still have to get past Gokhan's hands. I I figure at least like he's got a better chance than if it was the other way around. Yeah, it's like in the level also for UFC, Bellator. Yeah, it's higher than the other organizations. Like let's like Nikita Krylov. Is yeah. that's the name of the guy. He got cut from the UFC. Yeah, yeah. he went back to Russia. He killed everyone there. He's like he's I think yeah. he's in a three or two win streak already. Like he's not bad, but when he goes to UFC, he doesn't look as good as he should. But he's it's too young. Yeah, but. Uh, it's you, hard to. Do you think that the heavyweights have a shorter lifespan than the and the lighter weight guys? No, I think if you're lightweight, you have a longer fight. Like you see, yeah. you can fight so much older, like even Mark Hunt. Yeah, you, but I mean, you, like, like they they take damage and stuff. Like even like what's the name of the? He's with Bellator now, Ryan Nelson. Right. He they're forty, 40 over forty years yeah. old, and it's hard to see like. A lightweight guy, yeah. like above thirty-seven, doing great. They always like start to decline because the division has is way deeper, has way yeah. more talent on the division but you than also, the heavyweight division. It's, there's a higher risk at the heavier weights than there is at the lighter weights of getting knocked out. No, definitely, definitely because they're heavy and they hit harder, but. The tr they train they train differently. Yeah. They have less people. It's shallow the division. Even yeah. if you lost a couple of fights, you're not gonna get cut. And then like yeah, you're right because the 
there's there's not that many heavier guys. Yes. So they pretty much all at one point or another have trained with each other. Yes. Because they need it. Yes. Like um, remember, yeah, I think you were here, like back in the in the Jocko days, like Francis and Gama. Yeah, Francis was coming and in. He was training with, with Vulcan. Yeah, training for Vulcan, training for St- St- Steph and Struve. Yeah. He came training for us. Very nice guy. And even then, it's Rambo. funny because like. Matt Mitrion was supposed to fight Steven Struve. They finally fought, right? Yeah, they finally fought. They fought. And yeah. then it's like now they're training together. Yes. So it's like you can't. It's a, it's a small. It's a small community. Yes. So that's why, like, that's yeah. why I think it's always funny with people talking about like the fighters talking shit towards each other. It's like, eh, you're, they're usually gonna end up seeing each other at one point or another. Yes, they will. They will definitely. Even the in this and the heavy division, so definitely they're gonna see each other. They don't. They don't have many options. They don't yeah. have many options. I remember, like, a few years ago, people were considered Andre Arlov like, done. This yeah. guy is done. He's done for this spot. He came back to UFC. He almost had a good got a title of shot. Almost got a title shot. Yeah. Because on these heavy divisions, like, you have a long life. Yeah, I don't know. Because he had, a like, longer the... longer cool. life compared to the lightweight division. I th- yeah, I think you still... Because you still, like, the strength is the last thing to go, right? You yes. still, like, the speed goes quick. Oh, definitely. But the strength is there. And then, yeah. I mean... Yeah, it's weird. And then there's always, like, little outliers that, like, could still fight but never, like, really do. Like, Vinny Magalhaes. Like, mm-hmm. he could still, like, yeah, fight. He still Didn't fight. he... He was supposed to fight, like, a couple months ago? Or did he fight? No, he didn't fight. I thought he was supposed to fight, yeah. No, I'm, I'm not Last sure. time I remember, like, talking anything about Vinny, though, was when he was supposed to do that Metamorris match. And he, like, had to bail out because he got the staff infection. Mm-hmm. Oh, did you see that? Like, I know we were, like, we were talking about we didn't get to watch the fight so much, but Kevin Lee had the big staff infection. Yeah, on his chest, how they allow him to fight? Like <laughs> that? Oh, so from that what was I... was such a huge bump. I said, what yeah. the hell the guy has on his chest? But from from what I heard was because it was it wasn't superficial because it was deep in the muscle, which is not that it makes it that much better. Come on, he got but a cut there, huh? I think I think just the UFC has been playing so many games, and then the stuff with like Usada and John Jones, like uh, there's there's too many games and too many friends going I think out. They invest too much on their fight card, like yeah, they they wasn't going to risk to lose that that main main event. Yeah, they couldn't do that. That would have been two main events in a row. Yes. That they would have lost. And then Dimitri Johnson would run that event. And then yeah. he, they never did great when he... Yeah. He well, you s- the, Patrick, uh, you saw Patrick Cummins, like, too? He's got, yes, like, a big he got staff, staff infection. Uh, his foot, right? Yeah, it's like, he posted a photo. It's, like, oh, come massive. On, it's so gross. It's, it was gross. I didn't, I didn't even... But then, like, Corey Anderson's like, oh, bro, you'll be good by Saturday. Why are you bailing out already? Like, You're not going to be good by Saturday? Come yeah. on, Yeah. Like, like, yeah, an IV drip, so you lose an entire week of training two weeks before a fight. No the, one's going to do that. Like, many of the students, they always ask, hey, what do you take after training? I said, shower. I always take a shower after yeah. training, so avoid all this. You no. can get it if you have a cut and stuff, but if you shower properly... <laughs> I'm not saying that these guys don't shower. I'm not saying that. Yeah. Not, well... I'm not I'll saying say that. It. I'll say it. I'm not Some don't. That. I'll say it, some but don't. But can be the guy, sometimes the jeans not clean perfectly. Yeah. So you never know. You know what's great for that? What? Jiu-Jitsu Soap Company. Definitely. No. Jiu-Jitsu I just Soap. Had to... <laughs> you guys can send me more soaps. You guys, I think you guys sent to Gilbert. Gilbert gave it to me. So uh, yeah. send to her this time. They're good. Yeah, big shout out to Jay. Um, he's uh Jiu-Jitsu Soap Company started sponsoring the, the podcast a few weeks ago. So that was just a shameless plug. It's actually really good. Like he sent me a bunch of, um, a bunch of like Star Wars shaped. Oh soaps. yeah, yeah. You can't send any shape for me. <laughs> it's just soap. Just send him soap. He goes through soap all the time. There's so many people like stinking. Actually, he was. Uh, we were talking about. There's a. There's hint of possible like, um, ghee like soap to like oh, wash yeah? the ghee, nice. which would be good. That that would be great. I know that. Like I know that's super necessary for some people. Definitely, because like. People don't understand like ringworm, staph infection, or any other skin disease. When you train, you sweat, that stuff still in your clothes. You gotta yeah. wash your gi, you gotta wash the training, you gotta wash your body, you gotta like you gotta use good good uh, good yeah. uh, good material, good gear. If you're not, that stuff is gonna be there. Yeah, it stays. It stays in. Like even if you look at it, if you look at someone who's had a white gi. 
for like even depending on how how they sweat and how they eat like let's say for over a year if they use the same white ghee you'll see like the yellow pit stains oh and yeah stuff like sure that. if they eat a lot of indian food then yeah for sure food, man you know? oh it's so bad actually you know what's funny <laughs> is that the other day was the first time in like a long time where i had to tell someone like dude you need to wash this ghee like way more some people say that they wash it and you know they didn't like when you feel the ghee is like a little oh, kind of crusty uh, come on. or something. <laughs> slimy. Like yeah, slimy. slimy. Yeah, That's when you know on. they didn't do it. But I'm like, dude, like is it was a white belt, so you can't get mad. But I'm like, dude, you need to watch this ghee. I'm like, first of all, it's disgusting for me because I got to smell it. Like if you can't smell it, I don't know what to tell you. But like it, all you need to do is just go look up staph infection, MRSA. Like that's uh, – people don't get it. Especially like the newer people, like or people that haven't trained martial arts before, they don't get it. No, they because don't because they've so never quick. seen like what happens. Yes, and like the stuff that you have to go through. And a lot of people like don't have health insurance. A lot of people don't have the money. They barely have enough money to train. I don't have health insurance, so the last thing I want to do is get it's sick. Get sick, definitely. And it's it can be a cut. It can you can get a small cut, yeah. and then you get even if you cut your nails too much, you yeah. get stuff. You get ringworm. So. You guys gotta watch out of your hygiene. Well, it's clean, funny, clean like your, your gear properly, and that you yeah. should avoid most of the things. Like your fingernails are probably one of the most dirtiest things, dirtiest like on the planet, and yes. it's like the creases next to the nail. So like when you get like a little hangnail, you know, or like when it goes mm -hmm. in or you rip something, mm -hmm. like you can get a staph infection for after sure, that, definitely. and that is not fun, man. I've I've had like infections like that, not a staph infection, but you can't you can't do that. Like some people just need to get. The idea of use jujitsu soap, use some. It's so even. Oh, you know what? Even if it's not jujitsu soap, use soap. Don't be dirty. Use I would, normal I would, soap. The soap to kill the bacteria. Yeah. That's a great soap. Yeah. That's bacterial soap. That's enough, man. Like, just go wash yourself. Just, At least brush your teeth. That's the other thing. Just brush your teeth. <laughs> There's people that come in that don't brush their fucking teeth. It's like even if you chew gum, like chew gum at least before class. Do something to help somebody out because Chew it's gum disgusting. Chew gum doesn't gonna help. It's like yeah, if you're stinky, put the perfume. Not gonna help. <laughs> it just masks the real problem. Yeah, it's still bad. It's still bad. Make sure you brush your teeth. No beer, halitosis. Oh man, it's so bad. <laughs> I've had to roll with some really bad people. I'm sure you, you like you have for sure. Mm. Yeah. So what's going on with you then? So uh, now you're teaching at Combat Club? Yeah, I'm teaching my, my normal time now. is like 1 p.m. So No I'll, more 7 o'clock class? It's, it's, the 7 o'clock class now is 6 a.m. Oh, even better. That's your favorite <laughs> time of the day. <laughs> I know. The earlier, the better for you. Yes, for sure. But yeah, Gilbert and Vinicius are taking care of those classes. Thank God. Yeah. And so 1 p.m. class is my class. And I, night's time, 7.30 p.m., I'm always there. Yeah. No teaching, no help in teaching. Man, the class has gotten time, massive, too. The class is massive. Yeah. Like, like, I think like two weeks ago, we got like plus 30 people yeah, in the yeah. class. And then we class, seven new members. Yeah. The only for one class. You know, what's funny, yeah, too. Like, good. one of the, the, the new people that signed up for the, for the kids' class is an artist that like i'm a huge fan of dave burns oh Burns. And i'm well, trying to i'm trying to get him to to do the podcast so if you see him in class tell him tell him i, I said he jumps on but sure. yeah it's funny because one day he posted the photo i was like bro that's one of my gyms like <laughs> like for sure now you have to do my podcast but yeah if anybody um if anybody checks him out i want to say it's oh man i can't think of the name of his company hot arts I want to say, just look up artist Dave Burns. He does uh, concert posters and movie posters for like a lot of bands and movies and stuff that I like. Super talented guy. He's got a poster. Um, I don't know if you saw it at uh, Temple Martial Arts. It's like the scene from the yeah, Karate the, Kid. Yes, it's so that I, I love that one. It's so awesome cool. Awesome poster. We got to get you actually go over there. You got to do like a seminar or something. Yeah, we can do something there. We can run cool. something there. It would be cool. And... I'm excited now about this fight now, man. Yeah, I was gonna ask. So, like, what's what's the deal with with your uh, with your opponent? I think I I don't know. I couldn't watch much of his tape yet. I did a little bit of tape study, but you gotta look at the internet. You couldn't find much on YouTube. Right. But his fights are out of the Freestyle Fighting Academy. It's here in Florida. Yeah, yeah. 
I think he was he was a AKA. I have many friends in Thailand. I think yeah. he did. A, he went there to improve his striking skills. He's standing off. He has seven submissions. He's the fight time in the local promotion. He's champion. So, if he has seven submissions, he should he most of them should be a grappler, right? Yeah. If you look only at the numbers, but yeah, I'm sure he's a complete guy. I think he went. I think his last two fights was de- were decision. So, right. for title, five rounds. He already went through five rounds, so he should have a pretty good condition. I'm expecting the best of him there. But uh, I'm ready. I think on my on my last fight, in my eyes, I did enough to get the wings. But the judges didn't see the same. Yeah. But. I had the 15 minutes, I'm not complaining. I could finish the fight if I didn't want to let yeah. the judge's hands. That very last like scramble that you did, it was like it was so close. Yeah, it was. that's how I think I won the fight because thinking about the one championship criteria, there's no round by round, yeah. fight as a whole, yeah. wins the fight, who gets close to finish the fight. He was never close to knock me out. Yeah. We did similar damages to each other. I almost submit to him at the end of the fight, so I think I won. Yeah, I think I think <laughs> I mean I agree with it. I but like no, but one of C didn't see that way. The, no, no, one of C right. The, the judges, judges didn't see that way, but it is what it is. It resolves is a tough opponent. I think we should fight again yeah. in, in bigger league soon. <laughs> I hope for that, and then we we will we will see who gets the best. Uh, out of the one that night i think he's a good fighter and he will he will definitely be on the good on the on the yeah it'll be a good challenge it'll be a good challenge he will be there and like i think uh, talking back in on the primers uh, primers fc fight i think it will be a good fight for me his style is good for my style styles make fights i think uh, i'm gonna be aggressive more I think uh, the last fight I hesitate a little bit. I'm not gonna do that this time. I'm gonna put, go there. I'm gonna put my let my hands go a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, are you gonna are you gonna drive or fly up there? I'm gonna fly up there. Yeah. I'm gonna fly up there. I think I'm gonna try to gr- bring Gilbert there. If you're not, I'm gonna bring Sean I or, should, or Marquez. Yeah. I'm gonna try and see if I can finagle my way in there and try and just come in and document it it'd be kind of cool because that's going to be like the closest you fought here yes. for me to go watch so um yeah i gotta try and figure out i uh, like it'll be the first time the event is still like uh, trying to get to uh, like uh, tvs and stuff so yeah. if you if they don't get anything i think very hard. probably they will get something if you know it'll be live on youtube or on facebook yeah. So it will be worldwide. Everyone can see. I have a lot of fans in Asia, in Brazil, so they they will be able to to watch the fight. Saying I'm I'm excited to be there. Put a great show for you guys. We'll set up a we'll set up a little live stream cell phone yes. on Kate's side. Yeah. It'd be kind of cool. Hope to to my goal is to win, but yeah, if you can get finished, it would be great. Yeah, it'd be good. So what do you, what do you think? you're going to do after that like besides are you going to go back to competing jiu-jitsu or it's because uh, i mean miami's open this weekend and i know you talked about saying you're not going to compete no i'm not going to compete is like i'm i'm my focus is mma now i don't like to divide my focus a lot right when when you you direct your focus on uh, uh, too many things it's hard to yeah to to, to be really good uh, at once so the Miami opens with Gui now this weekend. Few of our students gonna compete. I'm gonna be there to coach the guys, and but I'm not gonna compete. I'm not training. I'm teaching a lot in the Gi, but I'm not training in the Gi. Right. And if I enter a competition, I want to enter to win. If you, I think maybe I won't win, yeah, I don't even compete. That's I, I, I think I, I know how I can. How how good I can be, and if I don't, I'm not at that level. Yeah, I don't. I don't want. No, to I I definitely ag- agree with that. I can, especially for for your level, like you can't half-ass it. You can't just be one of those people just show up. Yes. No. no. Just whatever. Um, Marcelo is gonna compete. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I spoke to him earlier. He said he he will probably compete. 
But he he has a big fight coming in Guatemala. Yeah. There'll be, I think, uh, what's the name? Oh, uh-huh. I don't remember. I don't remember at all. But yeah, see, I saw him in the... Yeah, he was like posting it. He's like, yeah. I know he's excited about it. He was like, uh, we're actually going to record a podcast Friday um, with a special guest. But um, so it'll be funny. Like, did you listen to the podcast I did with him? Yes. It's funny as hell because I was trying to like ask you questions. Like, so in case you guys listen, didn't listen to it, I did a podcast with Professor Marcelo Cohen. And the main subject was the online argument and hatred that he was getting for like the longest time. And you were actually one of the few people that was actually there to witness what happened. Yes. And I was trying to get a hold of you before I got to the uh, to the gym to make sure that I had all my facts right. But it seems like after we did the podcast, like everything died down. It was, uh, it's one of those things that people just kind of like way over so, sensationalized it. So I'm going to try to make a long story short. So yeah. what happened? Mar- wait, wait, you're not going to start up fight again, are you? No. Nah. Okay. You're checking. Marcelo and I, Marcelo took me to, we, we travel was Marcelo, Setsubala and myself. We went to Jacksonville yeah. to compete in Nanaga. So it'll be my first tournament here in the U.S. I want to fight the the Miami Open, so it'll be a warm up tournament. So we went, we traveled to the Jackson View and that day Naga has a thinky beginners, intermediate, advanced and expert division. Yeah. So expert division <laughs> should be guys in four or oh, like in f- mo- five or more years of grappling. So you should be at least a brown belt. So you want to go with years and not actual yes. belts. Yes. Because Naga, they do differently. Right. And like Marcel, I think the guy he fought, it was a blue belt, I think, if I'm not wrong. But like, it's not Marcelo's fault. Yeah. The guy, first yeah, of all, belt. he should not describe himself on the expert division. That's expert. But if wait. he wants to face guys, he could go on the advanced division. But do you, do you think that it was... If he was legitimately looking just to, like, challenge himself just to do it for fun. Like, let's say he was your student. He said, like, Professor, I want to do this just to challenge myself. Would you let him? No. You'd be like, no. Like, no. Why would you say no? Like, would you think it's, like, it's disrespectful or it's like, no, you're just throwing yourself out there? He's just throwing himself out there. He's not ready for that. That's right. why he's expert. And right. he's proving he's not ready. Marcelo finished him last night. <laughs> I'm not trying to laugh, but it's funny. <laughs> Marcelo, fi- and the guy was like, I think he was posting on Facebook before he was going to go there and kill right. the black belts in the division. Oh, f- have a black belt in my bracket. I'm just going to walk through them. I don't know what world he lives to think that. Man, okay. black belts uh, have way more tools than blue belts. Yeah, so, of course. But so, all right. So you're saying that if I decided to go challenge myself and go roll with black belts, would be like, no. No, roll? You go <laughs> and roll in the gym, but not in a tournament. Roll in the gym. You can't roll but, the black yeah, like, belt in the but gym. But that's the, the setup that the tournament has. So you think it's wrong for them to do it that way? I don't think it's wrong for them to do it that way. You should be true to yourself. Right. What's, what's your... What's your level experience? I mean, to me, it's no different than when you have like Taekwondo black belt sign up for black belt division in like IBJJF. Like, because it happens. They sign up for it and they get their ass kicked. Sure. They like, should. Yeah. The Taekwondo black belts, not Jiu Jitsu. Who was it? You see, was it Taekwondo? I no, think it was I don't Taekwondo. Know. Taekwondo? No, Taekwondo is only kick, it's striking. Right, but you never see that? You never seen no. the video of like Gal Val like literally dancing on the guy? Ah, but that guy's a, I think he's a jiu-jitsu black belt. No. He used to teach. No. He was either he was either like a a uh, a judo guy. No, he's he was a judo he was a judo black belt. I think Galvon told his history once for yeah, yeah, yeah. for the guys cuz the the team that Galvon started dancing on him was because before the match start, he was being disrespectful. The guy came to Galvão and said, "Hey, look, I'm gonna compete. I know you're gonna beat me, but do, ju, let's don't just don't kill me. Should be fine." And like Galvão was like kind of skeptical. Right. So the fight started. The guy tried to fly about, do some shit to Galvão. 
That's why Galvão just killed right. him and dance and disrespect. Not disrespect, but just you know, he just did, making him look it. so bad. Yeah. But he deserved that. Well, it yeah, happened. Definitely. It actually happened the other day again. And there was a video that was running around um, on Instagram. And it was, they said it was two black belts. But the, I couldn't tell if the if the guy, he had the, the colored belt. Mm -hmm. Like, I couldn't tell if he actually had a black belt on too. Because it wasn't double. They, they just gave him mm -hmm. the, the colored belt. And... I think the guy was a a Taekwondo black belt. And sure enough, they started. And they, to me, it didn't look like the other guy was a black belt, like in mm -hmm. Jiu-Jitsu. But he caught him in an armbar. He kind of really more cranked his arm than really got him in an armbar. And it was done. It was done in like 45 seconds. So it's like, it happens. You ever see the, the, the purple belt match? This was years ago where the guy was like notorious for kicking people and getting disqualified. No. Yeah, it was. Uh, it's this Asian guy. Um, I'll bring it up to you afterwards because I can't pull it up now. But basically, it's. I, th I want to say it was a nogi match, and whatever they shake hands like, and they go to start up, and like the one guy was low, and the Asian mm -hmm. dude goes and he throws a kick and almost nails him in the head? face. Yeah, he goes to throw the kick. What the hell? Burr disqualified out, and he was literally like known for that. Like he would sign up for these tournaments, he'd try and like kick someone in the face the hell what's wrong yeah remind, remind me i'll show you but it happens like a lot of the times that's why like i don't i 100 percent agree with you with guys signing up for divisions they shouldn't be in this that you should be true to yourself what's your level of expertise for sure. that's the level you should compete if you want to try up go to a gym but what about open know? divisions because they do that a lot of time with the open divisions what will be like a blue belt against like a brown belt or a black belt i don't really agree with these kind of things like yeah. even in asia they used to do had a tournament i don't remember the name yeah they want to do like an open mat op open class division with the open like it doesn't matter the belts you could do, go there and compete and it doesn't matter the sex yeah can give ladies or men and all yeah. the, I said no I, I don't well I mean let's be honest that's if like, you if you put I'm Gabby Garcia she'd beat the shit out of a lot of guys yeah but then you put Rodolfo against Gabby Garcia <laughs> you put Bouchesha against Gabby Garcia how long do you think it would take for, for uh, Bouchesha against Gabby Garcia for yeah. like for that match how long would that match take minutes 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 I would go with that I think she would probably put up a good fight no, for sure, but Gabi is not the normal one. Oh, wait, size. old Gabi, old Gabi, or like new skinny Gabi? Oh, new skinny Gabi won't take long. I'm what sure. about old old Gabi? She can take like, she'll be finished. Not saying that she's no good, she doesn't have right, skills. Yeah. She of definitely course. does. No, she does. But like, has, and she and she's super big for... For, for a female, for, yeah. For a female. Yeah. The normal size female, I guess, <laughs> is experienced grappler. Like, come on. <laughs> My favorite you want is to go there and get hurt. Yeah, is that what's gonna happen? My You're favorite gonna... is still that photo of her next to Vanderlei for when they were doing mm. the Ultimate Fighter. Man, <laughs> she was not man. She was she was big. She, she was, was big. Really, really. That's like really mm, I don't know if I want to roll here today. I think <laughs> I'm good. Like, she just beat Tubby um, at ADCC. Yeah, ADCC. Yeah, I didn't. I never. I never got to watch that match. I didn't get to watch a lot of the matches. Actually, I have them all recorded. If you want to watch them, I know oh, you yeah? didn't get. To, like we should sit down and like analyze some of them, and watch them. I definitely want to hear like your point of view on a lot of the stuff. So UFC this weekend, right? Yeah, you get the card. Because I can't pull it up on the. the I'm laptop. trying to pull up the card here. Just a second. I'm trying to. I'm trying to post on Instagram right now. You guys so, should follow. Yeah. Uh, Jiu Jitsu Radio and some of the marketing on. Oh, I like that you're you're selling me more than you. Actually, yeah. Uh, if you guys uh, enjoy the podcast, make sure you follow Jiu Jitsu Radio. Um, shout out to all the sponsors too. But be sure to follow Herbert at uh, Herbert Burns on Instagram. Uh, it's the same for Twitter, right? Yeah, Twitter is yeah. Herbert Burns MMA, and then on Facebook is Herbert the Blaze Burns. And you actually just had an article come out. Yes, I have two. yesterday. Today, today, today. Are you doing any other like uh, analysis? Like, uh, I know you did one when you went back to Brazil, right? Where you did like a guest spot, where yes. you're like talking uh, about one of the fights or something. Mm -hmm. Like, are you doing any more of those commentary? Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. I'm going, going back to Brazil. I have this this kind of deal of sports interactive. It's a it's one of the biggest sports Brazilian channels. 
they have like the cha- the European Champions League for soccer. Yeah. They have like a lot of MMA events. The American ones like Legacy. Like now it's now it's what's the name? LFA like LFA. Legacy. Yeah. They have LFA. They have the AX. You should do one for CES. for lion fights. That'd be cool. So, and they have Glory also. Yeah. So I do the commentary for them. It's good. It's good to. Do you see um, uh, Bigfoot fighting against uh, Oh, man. Rico, Rico Verhoeven, that, that was so bad. That was so bad. Like, that was so bad, man. I like Bigfoot. I, I only met him like twice, so I didn't really get to talk to him much. Super nice guy. Super nice guy, but like, I really just kind of wish like he wouldn't do that anymore. I think it, Glory, the division also is not as deep as... Yeah. Because, you know, heavyweights it's not, doesn't have many options. Yeah, especially, like, not that high level. So, like, bringing Bigfoot to, to give you a good exposure to, yeah. the, to the event. But do you think that was, like, did they set him up to just be, like, a freak show? Or, like... Ah, no, they, they, they knew Rico. Yeah. Of, um, but Rico had, like, a him. close fight. The last fight he had before that one, that was a close fight. I think fight. That it was... was the, is really good, but yeah. he's still young also. Let's see. Behoven, I yeah. think he should transition to MMA. Uh, he did a few fights. I th- I think he would do good. I was saying, like, because Gokhan fought in the UFC finally, I would love to see Gokhan versus Spong in the UFC. Spong's more focused on the boxing. Yeah, he's just doing more boxing, but come on. Like, we kind of got robbed at the last Glory fight when they fought and Tyrone broke his leg. That was that was his last kickboxing match. Yes. Like, I don't really want to see him go out that way. And he's still good at MMA. Yes, yeah, he's still like, good at MMA. I think that fight would sell huge. For that would be a good It would bring in more of the kickboxers to watch MMA. Definitely. I Definitely. think that would be a good one. Okay. You got the card? I got the card here, so... Yeah. Main event is Donald Cibron oh, yes. versus Darren Till. That's this is the this is the Poland card. Yes. Yeah. That's a close fight. Man. Darren Till is way bigger, taller than Cibron. Yeah. And, and he's got like a good record too, right? Yes. I think he's 15 and 1. Yeah. It's 15 and 0 and 1 draw. But I think I, I would choose Cibron by the experience. He has also the grappling edge. Yeah, but like Cerrone's also like lost what the last two out of three fights. Yeah, but he fought Dos Anjos. Dos Anjos. He fought. He uh, fought, uh, he fought. What's the other guy? Damn, I'll have to pull it up. It was. I think he he fought. It was Wonder Boy, right? No, he didn't fight Wonder Boy. Um, I'll pull it up right now. Donald Cerrone. Carolina Kovalkovic is back against Jody Esquibel. No clue. Yeah, yeah, there's not. They're all like Polish. Like it's, it's not gonna be sure that deep Polish, of a card. And then I think has a, has an interesting fight here. Which one? Hey, I think like the beginning fight. Arthur fights. Lobov and Andrew Philly. Yeah. To one forty five. I think that's, Philly that's gonna just, get the best of him. Yeah. Wally Alves is back. Man, and he nice. got suspended, right? Who? Warley. Why? I think he got suspended. I think he popped. No, he didn't got he he lost to Kamaru Usman. That was his last that was, right, but that was like two years ago. No, it was like, Yeah. No, it was a year ago. No, it was more than that. No, it was Because like I'll look it up right now too. Hold on. I'm on Donald. Yeah, Donald he fought, he lost to Robbie. Lost yeah, to, to Robbie Jorge Lama, Masvidal. Yeah. Masvidal. And the last fight that he won was versus Matt Brown in December last year. Yeah, he needs. He really needs the win now. Yeah, so like if you look at it, I mean, maybe the a the last like stairs now. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, he needs a break though, because if you look at it, like he, he was doesn't fighting. want a break. I get it, but because he, he wastes his money, let's be honest, he wastes his money. Yeah, he he wants to. Lose his, yeah, he's I mean, money. he doesn't. He beat like let's say okay, he beat Matt Brown, and not that impressed. Matt Brown's retiring. Mm-hmm. Like Rick Story, okay, Patrick Cote, like it's still like guys that are like towards the end of their career, right? It's still tough. And then he beat Cowboy last year. He beat. Uh, and then he lost to Rafael dos Anjos. Can you believe that was December 2015 already? Yeah, but th- that's the welterweight fight. 
These, this is all, all the fights. No, 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 no. But he lost. He fought. Yeah, that was soldiers. when he changed the weights. Yeah. yeah, on the welterweight. And then he beat John McDessie and yes. Benson Henderson. It's like. No, this was years ago. Two years ago. Yeah. So it's like. I mean, it's not a, it's not a bad record, but what was the next one we were looking at? What did yeah. we say? I said Ting Ming, so Darren Till, Darren Till. No, that I was gonna look up. Yeah. He was going to look up. Oh, the other the, the Wale Alves. Oh, that's right. And I was actually like a big fan of his um, from the show. Like, I really had high hopes for him coming off of the show. It's hard for. I get, it, it's hard to get someone similar style as Usman to train with. For sure. He has like. Very different attributes than most athletes have, and for Brazilians, they like strong wrestling with a good striking switch distance. Yeah, and a guy who has a pressure fighter like that, yeah, it's hard to. In one lay, like I think he did do well in the first round, but then he got gas, and then Usman did the best of him, yeah. So the last fight was in November against Kamaru. And then before that, it was Brian Barberina. He lost also. Which he lost. And then before that, he beat Colby Covington. Yes. Who is somehow challenging uh, I don't know how Kamaru, Kamaru is not like... And then before that, he beat uh, Nordin Talib, which that's a good fight. He's yes. a tough guy. And then Alan Joban before that. So that's what I was saying. Like, I think he was like, he was on the path. Like, he was doing really, really good. Yeah, he was doing really, really good. And then he just lost the last two, but... I mean, Barberina and stuff also. Huh? It's the same style. Like, st pe style make fights. Yeah. And he has a style that's bad for your style, your fighting style. For Wale Alves, the scrappier guys, like the guys that press forward, the guys that look for the takedown, the guys that wear him down, are bad yeah. for his style. Camaro does that in a more technical way, and Barberina does that in a rustic way. Yeah. That's something like that. Not as polished yeah. as Usman, but it's the same main style of go forward, tr land strikes, and look for the takedown. Right. Then they never stop. So that's how. I mean, especially like uh, Kamaru, I feel like that's why like that Sergio Moraes fight was like a good show for him. Because I, to me, that's like pretty similar to what it is. Because Sergio comes from... The grappling from yes. jiu-jitsu. And then his striking got better. Same with Kamaru. Kamaru, like, he is fortunate enough that he had, like, good hands from the get-go. Yes. So now it's like his grappling is good. His jiu-jitsu is getting even better. Yes. And his, like, what else do you what else do you need? I think he gonna, I think Kamaru can be a champion. That really For sure. I see, I see that he can be. Like, he has a lot of. And his striking is way better. It's improving so fast. Yeah. And, like, if the knockout, he didn't summarize one punch knockouts. I didn't understand how Gilbert and, and Kamaru didn't get the, the bonus on the, the event. That was, I that know was bullshit. Lot that was... Of, there was a lot of KOs on the event yeah. and stuff, but come on. Gilbert no. landing a one punch knockout, walking away. Yeah. Like Mark Hunt style. Knocking out. And he, he hit that switch so good. Yes. Amen. Kamaru also. He hits Sergio Moraes with a forward row after that. Yeah. Come on. And they give the... the for Mike for Mike Kyle. Mike Kyle, he did knock out the guy. But the guy was lightweight, See, fights in a welterweight, took the guy, took a fight in two days notice. Yeah. Like, here's the thing, too. Like I like that you brought that up because I think that kind of sheds the light to a myth that people have when it comes to the bonuses a lot of people think that just because one person got a bonus doesn't mean other people didn't get taken care of after where they come up and they're like oh here we're just not going to tell everybody but we're giving you that like yes it happens but it doesn't not happen not happen. yeah <laughs> but like it doesn't happen as often as people think so it's yeah. not like gilbert came home all of a sudden he's buying a freaking ferrari or something no gilbert came home drove in the car all the yeah. way back from pennsylvania yeah to florida hey, life goes on <laughs> yeah and the same with like kamaru it's same like kamaru. kamaru had like those were both highlight knockouts of the year yes Hands down, because Gilbert flipped the guy's switch. He fucking dropped, busted his knee. 
His leg was bent over yes. backwards. Do you have that on video, by the way? I have that on video. Oh, you got to show me that. And then Kamaru put down a guy who was, what, two steps away from a title contention. Yes, he was in a, I think in a six or four, five fight. Yeah. Main streak. So it's, and you know what it is? It's as much as, well, that's, yeah, well, that's that one off of that. I'm talking about if you were recording from, from no, Kate's I, side. No, I couldn't, I couldn't record. You they wouldn't let you? No, no. Oh, because you were cornering. Yeah. So they make you shut off the phone. Yeah. Let's see. No. Boom. Yeah, he just totally flipped the switch. That's like a world star like hip hop knockout. That's the ones that, that you just look at on like the next morning. But yeah, a lot of the guys think like, oh yeah, well the UFC takes care of everybody, like when they do stuff like that, they just don't publicize it. Like, no man. Like maybe if it's like Connor or something like that, yeah. like yeah, they'll be like here. Here's like an extra fifty thousand or whatever. But it doesn't happen with everybody. And if anything, like, that just shows how much Gilbert has popped up, like, in the last uh, in the last couple of years. Like, I think it's that switch, that switch from WME, like, really made the, uh, made the, um, the switch that much tougher. If everyone's wondering why I'm distracted, it's because Herbert's snapping right now on Instagram, and we're trying to take a good photo. So make sure... You follow Herbert, so you get some little behind the scene. But no, I think that the switch for to WME, and I think they changed the company name now. Yes, but IMG, IMG, yeah. Like it's just, it's the new guy on the block trying to figure out what to do with it. I don't think. I think they focus is to they bought UFC from Zufa in a very it was not cheap. Oh, four billion dollars. So they want to recover. The as money much as, as much as soon as yeah, possible for sure so and that's what they're doing they like you they i think uh, zufa did a lot of for the, a lot for the sports i don't agree with many things that they did but they they were good for the sports like legalized the sport I mean, the yeah anti-doping and they 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 bring the sports to a mainstream now everyone talks about mma and you see, IMG, they never match any offer. Yeah. Like, if a guy gets a good offer from all the events, they let the guy go. Now, the light heavyweight division, shallow. Welterweight division is not shallow, still have talents on UFC. But he lost Roy McDonald, he lost Derek. Well, okay. yeah. So, he's lost, he's losing some fights. I, I am, I, I don't. <laughs> I'm available, sure. But. I think more the more events we have, if a good fight is better for the fighters and it's better for the public also. But I, I don't know if UFC gonna hold the monopoly how they're doing no. now in like in two years. No, that. they can't. They they literally can't just because they screwed themselves over with the sponsorship money. And look at it this way: they changed the beer sponsor. Now it's Modelo, right? Who? Modelo no, beer. I, I it's not Bud Light thing. anymore. Now it's like a like it's a completely different uh, beer company, and then the whole thing with the Reebok, they need to get rid of Reebok as quickly as possible. I, it's the moment that they like shot themselves off with the with the sponsorship thing and they like closed it off. I think that was the beginning of the end because now it's like okay, well, now the money can go to other promotions like Bellator. Yeah, I think the other promotion should be. Taking a little bit more advantage of that. A hundred percent, for That's... sure. I mean, think about it this way. It's, like you said, like WME, IMG, whatever, is needs to recover money as much as possible, right? As mm -hmm. quickly as possible. Yes. Because they're not really looking at things in the long term. They want to get a cookie cutter thing. So they yes. start putting out whatever fights. Yes. So... You and I, and obviously more you, we've been to enough of these fights locally mm -hmm. where you understand there's going to be shit fights. Yes. There's going to be a lot of shit fights, and you're going to be sitting there bored out of your fucking mind. And I see this happening more now where there are fights where you're like, I don't really care. Like, I really don't care. Like, look at the Polish card. We sifted right through that. Like, I'm not really running to watch that the card. The thing is that, like, UFC, they have a... But what they do, like they 
they hire the rising stars from the event. They never build a star. Yeah. They like they make easier to the guy. To, like I think they should invest a few of the like if they invest a little bit more on Demetrius Johnson. You see how, what he accomplished. He he can be an interesting guy. But that's a shell division too, right? Yeah, but he's he has a lap and title defenses now beating Anderson. So. He, yeah, but like okay, you have an eleven title like defense record against the same four guys. No, he, he uh, Reebok was a good was a good guy. See how he finished. He, he's they complained. That was a great yeah. Before, what did you think about that? Oh, he do, he don't finish fights. Then he start to finish everyone. Yeah, what do you Man, think about that finish? Finishing Koji Horugush, how he did. Yeah. Finish Wilson Hayes, how he did. Yeah, and now finishing. Man, that that finish he was. I no, I'm, saw that I'm, not I'm not I'm, knocking I'm, him. I'm not knocking him at I'm all. Not, I'm not. I never saw that in my whole life. I, that was like, whoa, what? With that flying, what the armbar? What the hell? If a front suplex, well, you said you the saw, guy up. And then, you saw the video that Hickson did it before. No, I didn't saw that. Yeah, Hickson did it in a, in a jiu-jitsu tournament, I think it was. Was it Hickson? I want to say, yeah, I have to pull it up. But yeah, he did it like before. No, so yeah. So, but he did some research on that. But uh, Yeah. It wasn't the first one. It's hard to be the first one to pull something. Yeah, out. even if you're the second but, one, it's hard like, to pull. But it I out. never saw that. Even if he, he was the thousand. Are you gonna guy. try and do it now? Maybe. Just <laughs> <laughs> joking. <laughs> no, I look. I totally agree. But the man, I think, but I think he he's finished, highly underrated. He finished the fight in a excellent, in a in a highlight yeah. display. And man, he, he they don't mark to him. It's sad to be... And he got screwed even more because when they changed the sponsorship thing, he lost the Xbox deal. Yes, that's also... The yeah, Xbox I think he deal was, was huge. that he can't keep his, his belt. Like, he wants to take a, a pictures of the 11 oh, belts all, yeah. together, but he can't. Yeah. Because they don't let him keep the belts. Yeah. Nah, so, that on. was stupid. I, it's a, it's, it sucks, but I mean, at the end of the day, like, you can't do anything. And even then, like, let's be honest, like... He goes for like a, how how much longer? Another three four years. Yes. And then what? Maybe he'll do Bellator. I don't know. I think he'll retire. Obviously. You think he'll retire? Retire? Yes. I think he beats. Let's say they they set up the T.J. Dillashaw fight. Yeah, I think he'll do a super fight in the end of his. Career. And he beats T.J. Dillashaw. What's next? Who's that? Who else is he gonna fight? No. Who gonna else is coming up in that Dominic division? Dominic Cruz. Dominic Cruz already beat him before. Oh, he can fight uh, the champion. What's his name? Oh. Huh. Um, Alpha Mayo guy. Which one? Alpha Mayo guy. He beats Dominic. Oh, um. Cody Gabriel. Cody yeah, Gabriel. Cody. So he had some. But can Cody cut fight? down that much? No, they do a catch weight, super fight. Yeah. That would be like a good challenging fight. Oh, Dominic. He fought Dominic before, uh, and Dominic beat him. Yeah. So it would be a good fight also. Yeah, that old Dominic, not new Dominic. New Dominic's still pretty good. He's still good. I'm not saying he's not, but I mean, he his foot issues are kind of screwing him over big time. Yeah, yeah the age also everything counts. Yeah, it's true. Actually, no, I was thinking. Speaking of injuries, we got to hit up um, the uh, the cryotherapy again. I need to do that again. Oh, let's do that. Let's also shout out to Novagenix. Yeah. So they helped them out. St. Bruce and Doctor. And uh, oh man, I know Andy. Shout out to Andy. I was gonna. I oh, was the Andy to, also. Um, man. and the good doctor. But I know I have his number here. Come on. Okay. Yeah, I know. So I, you doctor, just made me draw the blank too. No, um, come on, come on, come on. It's Tim also. His his name. Tim. What? Tim Bruce? No, the doctor is also is Tim Sigmund. Sigmund, yeah. Sigmund. Sigmund. Doctor Tim also Sigmund. Man, the great guys from Novagenics. They do. I wish you were there when I had the the had the podcast with him because i did the podcast with him yeah they did the podcast like yeah. they, they talk about the, the prp and the trt i think i might try and do the the prp like for for my back not so the back but the prp now for if you're losing your hair you should do well, that PRP i don't have to worry about no i don't have to worry about that head? no not even close. i don't have to worry I about have it so much hair <laughs> my hair is so thick i don't think i'll ever be bald but oh. yeah, but if I, we know a you, couple of people that could use it, oh, there's definitely. a couple of guys that we I always say that today and say, yeah, me, PRP. Oh, help there's you. there's not enough PRP in the world. I don't think so. For to help out Dan, <laughs> Danny is done. I don't Jesus know. Dan, no, no, Danny has no chance anymore. Like, it'd be great to see him with a wig, though. Yeah. 
I think he needs to do that because he doesn't have the, the hair on the top. He'll be like a, a clown. Clown. Yeah. <laughs> it, just hair on he's the just sides. gonna. Danny's just gonna dress up as it for Halloween. <laughs> um, let me ask you a question, and you don't have to answer this because it kind of gets onto like a touchy subject. But so, I found out a few weeks ago about a a black belt or alleged black belt. I can't find yeah just just stick with me on this because I have to be very careful not to state any names but it's this guy I have found no footage no photos of him rolling at all zero has schools he has like a few schools up north not only that but he's also kind of like vouched by a very big name in jiu-jitsu like one of those things where like you know like you get paid and like you can we take photos together kind of thing mm -hmm. um but they're like he has schools and he's teaching and then here's the other thing so a friend of mine's cousin signed up and i think i know who you're talking no. about so i'm not gonna say yeah names. i don't know because it's it's Nobody that like popular or anything like that. Nobody that that you know for sure. You don't know this guy. But I think I heard this story. I maybe I might have told you. Maybe. No. Oh, I know how you know. I know yes. how you know. Right. So, what do you think about that? Because then it's you do crazy. know. Because did he tell you the other part of it about this guy being accused of molesting? No, he didn't tell. You. So yeah, so I started doing research because of I like it. Just sounded too sketchy for Can me. So this guy's life is falling apart you now. No. He's no. fine. He's he's banking. He's fine. Uh -huh. So just to let me clarify it for people listening. So someone that I know has a friend or has a, a relative who started training jujitsu because she saw how much my friend enjoyed jujitsu. Um, but I found out how this guy promoted people and it just sounded sketchy to me. So I started doing research about this person and it just came to be that this guy is kind of like was vouched by a bigger name in jiu-jitsu now with that being said i kept on doing more research about this guy and it turns out that he pleaded i want to say it was either guilty or or no contest or something like that to molesting a drunk underage girl what the hell? at a party yeah like it was i forget the the specifics right now off the top of my head of like what happened but basically like he got accused he got arrested like they said, like you need to, like, you know, he worked his way through the system. He got out, man. But he's not allowed to like be around kids. But he still has these schools and he teaches kids and he's making like all these women and stuff. Come sign on, up. he can't do that. Right. So, again, digging in deeper, I come to find out that his way to work around the system is that he doesn't teach the class directly. He has other people teach it. But even then, it's like. You shouldn't be around anybody. No, you shouldn't be promoting or anything. So it's for me, around. like, to find out that who's promoting, like, who's vouching for this guy and saying he's a black belt is, number one, that's, like, disrespectful. Yeah, if he's not a black belt, he should never wear yeah. a black belt. He's no matter how much you freaking pay. Yes. So, like, with all that explained now, like, what do you think? I think, it, like, if you're not a black belt, you're disrespecting everyone that's... Yeah make like me you respect me because yeah. i made him way a lot you sacrificed effort. a lot sacrificed a lot it was 13 years of my life training dedicating myself and my time to jiu-jitsu to compete at the highest level not even if you're just a normal person who has a black belt so if you dream to have a black belt one day this guy is just mocking us yeah wearing that and yeah. he doesn't deserve no i i 100 percent agree I, I can never sit there and talk about it but like I even reached out to the black belt that allegedly like promoted this guy. No answer. Like no answer. Cuz I mean that's not right. And no, that like, is not right. Yeah. Doesn't matter how much the guys pay you. Black belts and this like has more value than money. Yeah. Things in life like how belts and and like love they have no price you deserve that yeah you didn't love is hard to say because you deserve 
sometimes yeah. and not sometimes to be loved and not yeah. to be loved. Yeah, uh, sure. But the, the belts and stuff, you work hard and you, you deserve to get that and you're going to get it. Yeah. And like this guy is just losing money if is that the case losing money to to wear in his waist and he yeah he should never wear that on his waist and that's what like throws me off too man like remind me i'll show you like the photos like all the stuff that i found out just blew in my brazil, freaking mind in, in brazil old times this happened if we knew that we just everyone gonna jump in a van Man. Go to his club and make him roll for us for yeah. hours. <laughs> Just close the oh, club. Be so Let's bad. roll. Have you Let's had roll. to? Have you had to like confront a fake black belt? Ever? No, never, never, never. Would you, or would you kind of let that just go? Like you don't no, want that I drama. I wouldn't let that go. I wouldn't. I, I probably won't be like wasting. Like, no waste my. I'm busy. I'm yeah. doing. I'm busy. <laughs> I do my own thing. Yeah. But like, if he, I had to confront. I had no problem confronting a guy. Yeah. I would oh. definitely confront him, but I wouldn't be like chasing him, making yeah. extra efforts for that. But if I had to, I would. Yeah, I I don't think we're at the days anymore where you can rush a gym and like call people out. You're gonna be exposed eventually. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter yeah. how. Like if you don't roll, people are ready. Like if you're black belt, you're complete out of shape. Come on. What you selling here? It's like I go to a nutritionist right he gonna pass me a diet and the guy's so fat so. i've seen that come on i've seen that plenty what of times up, bro what up that's like that's the lifetime you're gonna, you're gonna pass me a diet and you're so fat yeah well that's like if you go to like 24-hour fitness or well, early fitness and well, you if get I the go personal to, training yeah it's the same thing i have a personal training the guy's super fat oh come on bro yeah i love that out. or you get like the 60 70 year old lady that's sitting there and doing that it's like i'm sorry but the None. sport I play wasn't even invented when you were a kid. <laughs> like so, I know you never played any sports. So it's it's hard. Like and, uh, about age doesn't matter. If they have the knowledge, they will convince you. They have right. the knowledge. It doesn't matter how old they are. But if they are really out of shape, man, what you selling here? You should do it to yourself. It's so it's so good. Yeah. Right. If you. what your product is so good, yeah. you should do it. I mean, you, you can look, look look at like Freddie Roach. The guy can barely move. He's still coaching. Yeah, but he's he's, he's still willing to put on the pads and yes. sit there and do it. He can't but, do it as but, much. And he, and he, and it's, it's, if he if he doesn't have any disease, I'm sure he would be there even more. Yeah. But like he's doing, even if he's he's not at his best cap capabilities, let's start like that. Yeah. But like he's still doing, and he's still in shape. Oh yes. man, you think that would be like a good YouTube series, like yeah, exposing definitely. black belts? Fake uh, black we belts. can do exposing black belts or exposing people. Like one thing that really annoys me, <laughs> it's like when the guy think that they deserve a certain belt. Oh like, no, no uh, way. Oh, in town, the guy just trains no gear and he said, Oh, I would. The guy, I, I remember once I was in Singapore and came these, these kids, he was like, I was teaching the class and then the CEO guy said, Hey, uh, a uh, guy gonna come here and train he is a purple belt no gi i said what the fuck this mean right this doesn't mean shit right right right. there's no gi there's no belt right there's no gi so because if you have a shirt and you have a short why you need a belt right but if you have a pants and you have a gi you need the belt so, so you can keep the gi right together right <laughs> But you don't need the belt. I love belt the fact that you're like you're made gesturing, like putting on the. You gear don't and stuff. need the belt to keep your shirt together. Your right. shirt is already together. Right. So the guy came. Hey, I'm, I'm a purple belt on no gear set. Who gave you this purple belt? No, no, nobody gave me. So you give yourself. <laughs> you're and just stating what level you think you are. Yeah, no, no, because I used to train with purple belts and the good with purple belts, so I think I'm a purple belt. So that doesn't mean shit. Yeah, for sure. Because <laughs> belt is not skill on the mat. Yeah, it's just time. It's time, it's effort, it's discipline. Right. I'm going to look in, if you compete, I'm going to look you one way. If you don't compete, I'm going to look you in a different way. Right. Not, so if I, let's suppose I'm going to go do a boxing. Like, no, I'm going to do a taekwondo. But I'll never compete in taekwondo. So yeah. I go there and knock out the taekwondo master or a master. Yeah. 
No, I'm not gonna become a master. That'd be kind of cool though. Yeah, that <laughs> just go start knocking but, out like taekwondo black no, belts. But, <laughs> so if I do even if the master, I'm a master. No, I'm not gonna do it. Yeah. So if I have an argument with a lawyer and beat a lawyer in an argument, I'm a lawyer now. Officially a lawyer. <laughs> I'm with a lawyer. Right. I'm talking with a judge and the guy, the guy's stupid. Starts, oh, no, 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 you have it's no like, points. I beat you. Now I'm a judge. It's like, I'm so just I'm going to collect arm wrestling just, judges. I'm just collecting, collecting <laughs> new, new, new certificates now because I right. beat these people. Right. No, this doesn't work like that. In right. None of the other fields, it's not going to work in martial arts. Yeah. And these always come if a guy, oh, I don't like to do gi. Uh, the gi is not realistic. You're not going to see anyone on the... If you have a fight, you're not going to fight anyone wearing a gi on the street. Yeah, you're not going to see anyone in spandex. Yeah. You're going to fight if a guy in a spandex? Yeah. No, it's not going to happen. Usually yeah. the guy going to have a shirt, he's going to have a jacket, he's going to have a suit. And they can grab on that. Yeah. So the gi class is going to help you. If you ever did. But, but these guys that don't train the gi, don't like to train the gi, yeah. they consider themselves, themselves Purple belt. a certain belt. Oh, yeah. I'm a certain belt. No, you no know belt. You don't train the gi. You don't need any belt. I have been in public and seen someone walking around in the gi. So the never part, you can throw that out. But I remember I was in Publix. This was like a year ago, two years ago. I was walking around in Publix. And I see this guy walking around like a blue gi pants. And like I can't. That's Mike. Yeah. <laughs> no. No, these fit. These fit him. His butt crack wasn't oh, out. Oh, man. <laughs> wasn't out. So wasn't Someone Mike. needs to invent like an extra special size for Mike. I love you, bro. But we, we got to get you like some serious like like a belt belt. Not like a jujitsu belt for those pants. He's just got to get that fixed already. No, but this guy's walking around. I'm like, I remember I was like getting like vegetables and stuff, and this guy's walking around in like gi pants, and I'm like, really? No, I have, I have, I had a student in Singapore, and like, so, I think he did jujitsu Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and he did the kickboxing Tuesday and Thursday, and the class it was like six forty five. Start the class, a great time, six forty five a.m. So, this guy come in the gi every day. And the Muay Thai, he came over with the hands wrap on the car drive and with the shin pads. He was just ready to go. Ready to go every day. I said, man, look, he doesn't come to the sauna here. <laughs> <laughs> he he just shows up like buck naked yeah. to class. Like, I'm here for the sauna. <laughs> oh, man. Say, so, look, it's not sauna here. It's not a sauna club here. Because if you were... That's someone, like, that's just someone that wants to, like, show off. So, like, when he's driving, everybody knows that's where I'm going. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> like, I mean, I'll be honest. Like, sometimes if I know I'm late for class, like, I'll tape my fingers, like, on the way. That's just because I don't want to sit there and take up time. Like, oh, it's time to start. Like, oh, I got to tape it. But, like, yeah. I'm not going to drive around with my hands wrapped in the shin guards. Can you imagine? You got to stop and get gas. <laughs> it's like if you go... You're going to like a street fighter costume party or something? <laughs> what are you doing, guy? Oh, man. It's funny. But yeah, that's that thing that uh, the guys like, think they, oh, that's blue belt so bad. Um, the whites has some good white belts. Oh, the blue belt so bad. There should be a blue belt already. Why? Why? Who says that? No. I, oh, I, I, I know. I, I heard some I was like, I know that. a couple of blue belts that will come and take care of you, not me. No, no, no. But. No, but that, so what? If if you beat the blue belt, doesn't make you a blue belt. Yeah. Doesn't make you yeah. that belt. The that person that they can be out of shape, they can having a bad day. Yeah. But they they're not even as good as technically as you. But yeah. they already put in the time. Put in the time. They already on the martial arts yeah. road. They are ahead of you. Yeah. Not on the skill, but on all the other. It just shows like that means like you clearly aren't to that level yet because that's yes. where your mind is still. Yeah, back. exactly. Exactly. Like you still haven't evolved enough to sit there and say yeah, like. It's ego to yeah. think For that sure. the guy shouldn't have that kind of. Be oh, come on, man. Just I, I all the time say people, man, don't compare yourself to other people. Yeah. Everyone has your own speed to learn everyone has your own road if you compare your road 
to other people's roads, you're just going to get frustrated. Well, I had that conversation. Just focus on yourself. Yeah, I had that conversation with someone like a couple months ago. Like, you know how people always post. They got promoted. And they make the, the post like, oh, I just got my belt. But I want to mm-hmm. thank everybody, blah, 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 whatever. It's like it's not a fucking Oscar. But like, I get it. You're proud of it. I've yeah, done it too. Yeah, many people are proud of but that. But then it instantly becomes the backroom conversations with other people. Like, oh, did you see so-and-so got promoted? Like, that's fucking bullshit. That person fucking sucks. Yes. No way that's, is that happening. That's the, that that's, fucking that's the thing that, that should so like, happen. Yeah. Stopping. Right. Stopping me. So it's like, I just said, like, you know what? Like, I get it because I made that mistake at one point And I said that. And then I realized, like, you know what? Fine. Let them have it. If whoever, professor, whatever yes. decided, like, decided that the that's how it's let them fucking have it. Whether the professor's right or wrong, that's that's still not for you to decide. Yes, he's not a professor. He's right. not a black belt. You can decide. It but at the end of the day, it's like, okay, so if I'm a white belt and someone got promoted to blue belt, another white belt got promoted to blue belt, and I think, oh, he fucking sucks. Like, good, then go with it. Like, yes. just then smash him then. Go and smash him. Yeah, em. go and smash like, him. Everything. But don't talk shit just because... Say, and like, look, I made, like I said, I made that mistake at one point, but you sit there and you have to learn to say, like, you know what? Like, it's... And I talk about this with Sean too. It's like it's your journey. Jiu Jitsu is your journey. Yes. Don't give a fuck about somebody. Do, yes. If they got it, congratulations. You know, like maybe it's one of those things where they got promoted to purple belt. They're not at a purple belt skill level, like where you think a purple belt is, but maybe it was to make them push forward to to sit there and say, all right, now you got to make the real drive to like take. No, to keep the, it. the professor think he was on the yeah. skill. The professor think whatever he wants. He had the power to give that person that belt. Yeah. And that shouldn't be questionable. All right, let me ask you another question then before we take off because I know you got to go teach soon. Um, what do you think about people getting promoted on the podium after they win? Ah. Uh, do you think that's sandbagging? Because to me, that's sandbagging. No, I don't think it is sandbagging. You don't think so? No. I, I got promoted. <laughs> <laughs> Gilbert's got promoted on the podium before. But that's different for, to, from, from like brown to black or like other levels? No, I remember it was, I competed in the blue belts for a while. And then I went to Pan American on the Brazil in the CBJJA. And then... I won the Brazil Nationals team. Our team had three guys. Yeah. Three guys. So Brazilian National team is a team competition. Right. Has five guys in each team. Right. So who scored three wins? Yeah. Eh? So our team has only three guys. And so if you lost them. one of the fights, we already lost. Right, right, right. Nobody will fight anymore. <laughs> but we still won. Right. So I got promoted purple belt that day. Ricardo Vieira promoted me purple right. belt like i don't think i was sunny, but i wasn't even expecting i didn't even knew i didn't even dream right so to so get the the purple belt that i was thinking maybe i said maybe I, now i got this two tournament maybe the, i was <laughs> thinking maybe, you maybe, maybe, maybe the, you deserve to be maybe promoted. on the end of the year i'm gonna get yeah, the purple oh, see, belt. okay so yeah, right i was thinking that but so, then i went to get the the medal i said well i got a belt also Right. I don't think it is sandbagging. Like, it's cool to do that sometimes. I think Kyle got promoted black belt also in the tournament. Who? Kyle Terra. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He got second place. There's he like got the, promoted. The, they kind of make fun of, like, his speech and stuff because he was crying. Man, I don't think it is, sun, it is sandbagging. I think, like, you should look at guys like uh, that's a special moment for him. Yeah. And he wants to do that in front of everyone. Right. So he can feel special. I think that's that's how I feel. Because if you do in the gym, only the people on the gym. If the right. guy, it's a competitor. I will only do that if the guy wants to be right. a BJJ artist competition. Right. But not for normal students. Right. He just go there and compete. I would, I would hardly promote him on the podium. I would promote, promote him on right. the gym for everyone. I get you. I mean, I don't, I don't disagree with you. Like to me, though, sometimes it just seems like, okay, well, if you were already, com- like, if you're already at that level, then like, and you're competing against other people, you know, like that are probably weren't at that level, because then wouldn't, wouldn't then everybody else, like, they got second or third or fourth, shouldn't they be promoted too? Like, we're like, let's use the example there was. Like yeah. we're on the Brazil Nationals blue belt. Uh, team mm-hmm. so everyone should be in a 
pretty good level yeah. at their own belts. So it wasn't anyone like it wasn't new people there. Oh, I'm gonna compete in the Brazilian national team. <laughs> no, this is not gonna happen. It's big things there, yeah. and to get selected to represent that team on the national tournament, yeah, you should be already pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. And to represent, oh, let's represent it. Check mat here. No, you're gonna have many guys want to represent check mat. You're gonna have yeah. a trial to choose the best five guys. Yeah. And we had five guys, but one of the guys missed weight. Mm. <laughs> and the other guy was sick. So oh, man, we had three sucks. of the five guys. So, But we still won. What was pretty yeah, good. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> so wait, what about the guys that, the, the two guys that missed it then? Like, did they sit there and brag about that, like, they were part of the team? And oh, they no, were... they didn't even get medals. I mean, of course they shouldn't get medals. No, they didn't even get but medals. But, I mean, like, they didn't try to sit there and say, because, like, you know how it is in, like, in American football? Like, everybody gets, like, a ring when you win yeah, the Super Yeah, for sure. Bowl. Everyone from the Rooster gets Yeah, it. everybody's going to sit there and say that. No, they, they, they even get on the podium. They can. <laughs> Only if you make your weights, you can be on the podium. I mean, that's the way it was meant to be. Like, they weren't meant to compete? No. Like, it goes back to, like, the story that Hobson told me a long time ago where he was going to go compete at, like, jiu-jitsu or whatever. I um, forget what the tournament was. But, like, he was on the way there and he got into, like, a huge car accident. And, like, had to go get a car or take the bus, ended up, like, to get into the tournament just in time and he ended up winning. So, it's like, yeah. it's meant to be? It's meant to be, man. No, it's meant to be. I'd not say meant to be. He, he like, he, he could easily don't go to the tournament. Yeah. Oh, I have a car accident. Yeah. Okay, whatever. Yeah. Anybody could have, would have taken that excuse. Yeah, but he went anyway. Yeah. Hey. He made the effort. He made the extra effort that very few people will make. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I was, like, I was looking at old, old tournaments from, like, the, the 90s. Like, jiu-jitsu tournaments. And I'm like... I forget who who the match was. There was like some crazy like big names, and then I look. It's Pompa is the ref. It's like, <laughs> like come on, really? It's like everywhere I go, there's just like Pompas there, like <laughs> refing one way or judging or something. It's funny as hell. But all right, man, I'll let you get going. I know you gotta get ready to go teach tonight, yeah. and yes. I gotta get back to work too. I gotta head down to uh to Miami. Um, any shout outs? Any yeah, shout outs to to. Palm Beach Cryo to Novogenics, yeah. Combat Club, Hard Knocks 365. And please, guys, do follow me on the social media. Instagram is Hubbard Burns. Twitter it's Hubbard Burns MMA. Facebook it's Hubbard the Blaze Burns. So send me good vibes. I'm going to compete on December 9 in Oklahoma. Anyone interested on be a partner or a sponsorship can hit me up on one of these social medias. Any big sponsors? And, yes. You want to give a shout out to? Hmm? Any big sponsors you want to give a shout out no, to? No, I'm not to fear any sponsors at the moment. Oh yeah? Oh, there so, you go. That's a, that's good money for someone to be spending then. So that's perfect. Now it's your time if you think you should invest invest in a I'll get good sponsored prospect. by Sonder Marketing. I'll get yes. you sponsored by <laughs> No, that would be that would be good. Yeah, right, I would be mind good. that. Yeah, well, I mean, if I could afford it, I wouldn't mind it either. <laughs> um, yeah, guys, be sure to follow Herbert. Um, like you said, follow all his social medias. Be sure to watch the fight on December 9th. And uh, that's it for us. You're listening to Jiu-Jitsu Radio. See you next time. Well, there you have it, folks. Thank you very much to Herbert for taking the time out middle of the week in the middle of the afternoon to sit down with me. It's always fun to, to hang out with him. It, it's funny because we're good friends and we've known each other for a while, but he's a very interesting person and he's he doesn't talk much when you're out and stuff, but he's a very deep person, man. It's always cool to, to kind of bounce ideas off of him and joke around. Um, and I can't wait to see him get back into the cage in December and, uh, and see him, uh, do what he loves to do. So please be sure to support, support Herbert, um, and follow him on social media. I've been telling him to do his own podcast. Hopefully I can get him going. So go harass him. Tell him, Hey Herbert, set up your own podcast, but be sure you still come back on jujitsu radio because we need you on jujitsu radio too. Um, as always, 
Thank you very much to my sponsors, Choke Aloha, Jiu Jitsu Soap, XO Audio. Thank you for all the support. Be sure you check out their websites. Use the promo codes. Save some money. I don't make any money off of you guys purchasing that stuff. So don't think I'm trying to sell you stuff just because I'm making money on it. The day that I start making money off of the sponsors like that, I will let you know. I only support the companies that I like that support me um, and it's it's all about really building a community and building a core group I prefer to help uh, people that that really are are about the right things when it comes to jiu-jitsu uh, you know EXO audio has been so supportive of of this podcast and a lot of my fighter friends um, you know Andre Sukumtat they sponsor him and they're just they're an awesome company, man. I love the sound buds. I'm super picky about when audio stuff, so I love them. Uh, I pretty much take them everywhere I go now. Jiu-Jitsu soap is great. Don't get a staph infection. You guys don't want that. Staph leads to MRSA. MRSA leads to uh, six feet under, and you don't want that. I'm not trying to scare you guys, but buy a $5, $4, not even $3 bar of soap. Don't be stanky. Be sexy. Use jujitsu soap. Chocaloha.com. Last but not least, I can't thank them enough. And I also want to congratulate them um, for getting their, their black belts. Um, I, I wish I could have been there to take photos, but that's all I can say is congratulations on your black belt. Um, Chocaloha.com. Use the promo code Jiu-Jitsu Radio. Get 10% off. With that being said, thank you all very much. Please check out my blog, MyCosmicJourney.com. Follow me on Instagram. You can check out my company, Sonder Marketing, for anything Jiu-Jitsu, MMA related, and all the other crazy stuff that I get to run around the world, take photos of. Guys, that's the only time I'm going to ask you to purchase anything that I directly make money off of. The more you guys support me and support the artwork that I do, the the more I get to do stuff like this for fun and, and really kind of spread the positivity that I really want to push uh, out there. And, you know, when one of us makes it, we all make it because I try to bring my friends anywhere I go and, and really push everybody. So please check out MyCosmicJourney.com. Check out my company, Sonder Marketing, for anything if you want to hit me up on Instagram, Twitter, whatever, go ahead, shoot me a message. Tell me what you think. Please share the podcast. If you like it, subscribe to it. If you don't, I still love you. Not really, but I love you anyway. Thank you very much. Have a good night.